Hey everybody, it's Brett here with The Tuning School, and we're back for our forced induction series because we just wrapped up our testing with our C7 with 93 octane with boostane additive. So we're going to go into those results coming up. So like I said, I'm sitting here with Bob Morreale. We just did all the testing with the 93 octane and the Boostane, a product that we really like a lot, but let's talk about numbers and exactly what we saw from the test. But before we get into that, mm -hmm. I wanna talk about pros and cons of this product. Sure. So one of the first cons that we were kind of uh, talking about is uh, trouble mixing, right? right? And so when we first started doing our pulls, we actually were seeing a little bit of Nox still. And, and right. what was the cause of that? Like, why was that happening? Well, I think what we really learned was that when you put it in the tank, mm -hmm. it takes a good 45 minutes or so to get mixed up. Now, I think that that might, might vary based on the type of fuel system your car has. Absolutely. So this one is a returnless fuel system. Ah, okay. So, yeah. you know, so it has a harder time recirculating that fuel, getting, getting it all mixed, mixed up. up. Yeah. I think to do it right, like if you knew you were going to go dyno or drag strip or road course, um, you would want to pre-mix this into your five gallon jugs. Okay. You know, just kind of put the proper portions in or divide it out. Okay. That would be the best way to do it so you don't have any of the problems we had. Yeah. So I think because of that, it took a while for it to mix in with the tank. Also, what we learned was that it needs a good full throttle pull just to clear out the, the rails. I mean, we must have driven it for 10 minutes just, yeah, just but you know, at part I, throttle. At part though, throttle yeah, yeah, we didn't do any watt. No, and we noticed that we had knock and we thought, well, maybe we had an issue with, you know, with the product, but there's not an issue with the product. Um, so our recommendation would be to, when you do your first pull, after you've put the stuff in, mm -hmm. if you haven't had it properly mixed, mm -hmm. to leave your safe tune in it from okay. 93 only. Sure. And do a pull, cell phones. <laughs> yeah. Do a pull and then uh, allow it that opportunity to mix and you still have a safe tune in the car, you're not going to have knock. Once you've done one full pull, you should have enough time and enough mixing to go, okay, now let's add some timing. Very cool. And okay. we'll see safe gains. All right. Uh, just to protect the engine. Okay, awesome. Yeah. So let's talk about other cons. So um, this one's actually not a con, mm -hmm. but it's something that I've had people ask me about before. Right. I've had guys ask me, will this product ruin my O2 sensors? And right. the simple answer for that is no, it won't. No. Uh, th this is not leaded in any way. No. I mean, we use this on our road course cars all the time. All the time. Right. So, you know, in the comments, you guys might say, oh, you missed a con. Does it, is it going right. to ruin my O2 sensors? It's not yeah. actually going to. And we just wanted to make sure yeah, we, no, we covered use it a that lot. Here. And, you know, we, we're not experts on the chemical side of how any of this stuff actually works. Um, so, you know, you, you guys can always talk to the boost aim. Yeah, know, ask them absolutely. questions about longevity and things like that. Yes. Because um, even race fuels, like even uh, E85, does not really have a long shelf life because it's hygroscopic. Yeah. It just absorbs water. Absolutely. So yep. I don't know, but they're always available to chat with. Absolutely. That makes perfect sense. So yeah. uh, the la one of the last cons that I want to talk about is cost. And actually, we have a, a really good example. I've got a koozie here yes. that has the Dr. Pepper can in it. And it's on the side. It actually has a breakdown of what the cost is per gallon. Now, you right. were saying something about there is a price breakout yeah. for this particular product. So what, explain to me what exactly you mean by that. Uh, well, basically, I think it's probably cost effective up to about a uh, 105 octane. Okay. So what that means is you could mix this in with about 15 gallons of fuel. Okay. And you know still be cost effective. It's still cheaper than race gas, and it's still very effective. Cheaper as in this can, that, but yeah. like the amount you have to use. Yeah, per to can. get the octane that you're after. Yeah. Okay. Right. Per gallon, it still works out cheaper. It's still like seven bucks a gallon if you work it all out. Okay. You Where know, race fuel is closer to probably nine. Depends on what you okay. buy. I mean, there might be some cheaper race fuels. There might not. Um, so I would guess around 105 octane is where you would effectively use this as a cheaper alternative to race fuel. That makes perfect sense. All right, awesome. So that pretty much covers our cons. Now I want to talk right. about the pros a little bit. So one of the first things that we were originally talking about is mm -hmm. lightweight, right? Yeah, it's awesome. So those race, uh, the race fuels over here that we have, they're in five, you know, five, five gallon pails. Gallon. They're pretty heavy. They're very heavy. And if you're driving a C7, unless you want to right. just buckle it into the passenger seat, <laughs> no. there's not really very many places no. to put it. But this is, th I mean, this is all that that comes with it. I mean, yes. this is very small, very lightweight. Yep. So we were talking about that's one of the first pros of this product is you can get a good octane boost yeah. out and of this, something pretty small. This will treat about a full tank. You know, for, yeah. this is a 16 gallon tank. Yeah. To effectively treat 15 gallons, you'll be at 103 octane. Awesome. So with you, the whole can. Yeah, and you can go to the drag strip with this in your trunk. Yeah. Or like we or do. in your glove box. I mean, it's I that mean, it's that small even. You, you know? could go to the road course and bring you know a case of them and mm -hmm. last you all weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it's much lighter than toting. You know. 10 of the 15 gallon drum or five gallon, you know, pails. All right. It's just much easier yeah. to carry around. Absolutely. That Even makes perfect sense. Truck, it's a lot lighter. Right. And then uh, we already kind of covered this one a little bit because right. we talked about it in the cons, but 
Um, it actually is cheaper than race fuel to a point. Sure. So that's that is a pro. It is actually a cheaper solution yes. to race fuel a lot of times. Yes. You know, it depends on what octane you're after. Obviously, there's a breakdown for that and whatnot. Yep. But um, one of the know. things I would highly recommend this for is any dyno shop. Yes. Uh, when we get a car in that needs a, a tune, you know, sometimes you get a guy that brings a car in with 87 octane or 89, mm -hmm. and you're like, dude, I, I can't tune much with this. Mm -hmm. Why don't we run some better fuel in it? And in order to run out a half a tank of gas, you've wasted a whole day of, of your time. Yes. So uh, any, you know, dyno shop would probably want to keep a case of this just for that purpose. Yes. So you could throw some in. And I know someone's going to go, oh, but you don't really know. Maybe it's, you know, better than 93 right. at that point. Yeah, I got it. But you could conservatively tune it and go, yes, yes I know it'll be okay on 93 because I have at least the octane to make it happen. Yeah, absolutely. Or you can mix it in for the ratio. It doesn't require you know, rocket yeah. science to figure it out. Yeah, absolutely. We, we do yeah. that all the time here yeah. in our own facility. And Some people deliver a car for a with 87 octane. Yep, happens all the time. It's you guys at home wow. know that. Yes, wow. Um, so the last pro is that this actually made decent power through tuning. It did. And so we're actually going to go into that next. We're going to talk about the gains that we saw with this product. All right, so we're gonna jump into the results of Boostane, mm -hmm. but before we do that, let's review what our last best, you know, fuel yep. was. What's the last thing we made the best 93 power? 93 octane. On? And that's because it's the only thing we've tested, that's but our still. Start point. So what yeah. was the power that control. we saw on 93 octane? Okay, so the best we got through 93 octane with tuning, we were able to get 15 degrees of spark advance in it. Mm -hmm. We had 11.9 to 12.2 was the best air fuel ratio. It was yeah. the happiest there. It was safest. Made great yep, power. Absolutely. Um, the best uh, peak horse power was 574 and torque was 500 foot pounds. Okay, awesome. Um, so that was our, our best. And, and, that, and that's nothing to sneeze at. 574 is pretty good. I mean, awesome. and, and that was awesome. On the Mustang so, Dino, that's huge. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot yeah. of horsepower, especially yeah. for our Dino. Yes. Notoriously, it reads pretty low. It does, yeah. So uh, let's talk about the first thing that we did, and that is we didn't actually change the tune file at all. We wanted yeah. to see if by just adding Boostane, right. we would get any horsepower gain whatsoever. We didn't think that we would, but in fact, what did we see? We, f we found power. We, we did. It was actually really But there's a reason we found power. Okay, so explain to me exactly why we found power. Thinking. So um, this does a great job of protecting you know, against knock. It's an octane enhancer, does mm -hmm. a great job. Um, and by adding it to the, to the fuel, mm -hmm. I don't think that was the catalyst that caused the power to bump up. I think what it was is that it had an effect on the air fuel ratio. Ah. And if you look at our scans, um, here we go. Actually, uh, this was our scan with just the boost stain in it. Yeah. Okay, so no tune changes from 93. And if you'll notice, the air fuel ratio is much leaner. Yeah, We're absolutely. We're on the high 12s most of the time. 12.9. Absolutely. 12.4, 12.8. Then, versus we were at like 12.2. 11.9 our, and 12.2 yeah. with just 93. With just 93. Yeah, so it appears to have an effect of leaning out the air fuel. Okay, well, let's go look back at our spreadsheet. So that did, in fact, make an effect on our power. It did, yeah. And what we saw from our dynographs. This one here. Yeah, what we saw five. from our dynographs is it didn't really gain anywhere but at the very top. But at the right. very top, we gained, what was that? Well, we went from 574 with just... Uh, 93 octane to mm -hmm. 584, so it picked up 10. 10 horsepower. Yeah, through that's, and that's not bad. I no. mean, that's that's decent. Right, but it's also it can be detrimental if you were to really run this car long term without retuning it. Yes. You would want to retune it. Because I wouldn't run this with a supercharger at 12, 8, 12, 9. Yes. I know it's direct injection, and mm -hmm. it can run leaner, um, and it did not knock. Right. But I wouldn't necessarily send it home that way either. And it depends on what your original tune was set up for. Like if right. your original tune was set leaner to begin with, and right. then you're adding the boost tune, you right. gotta have to realize that like you might cross that threshold. Like we were kinda on the rich side when we were tuning with yeah. the ninety three, so okay. it was okay that it was a little bit leaner. Like right. it was it was it wasn't anything that I was too wasn't concerned. Explosive. Yeah, I wasn't too concerned about no. letting out of the pool or anything right. like that. And there are gonna be okay. some people who go, You're not concerned, it's a twelve eight to a thirteen oh air fuel with a supercharger. Yeah, I know. That would be a concern if it wasn't direct injection. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. All right, so now that we've got that covered, we actually went ahead and did some tuning. Correct. So before we get into the numbers and exactly what we saw from tuning, what was some of the trends that we saw? So yeah. what, what, what made the most power? Was it leaner? Was it richer? Was it more timing? Uh, kind of, what, okay, so what did it didn't see? hurt to be a bit richer. Okay. So we didn't lose any power going back down to a safer air fuel yes. of 11.8, 11.9, which we did. So as soon as we saw that, we went. I think we lost, I think, one horsepower. Yeah, or it was really like minor. Over, it could just yeah. be from back-to-back -back pulls. Mm -hmm. um, so in all the testing we're doing here, we're doing back-to-back -back pulls for backup purposes. And they're usually within one horsepower of one another anyway. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, we went from 5.7 
574 on pump gas, the 584 with no tune, just putting the boost in. in. Okay. And then after tuning, uh, we were at 598. So that was our safe, our most safe horsepower. So 574 to 598. And that's a great gain. However, we did also learn that this car does want more timing still. It's just we are octane limited. Yeah, because we did end up seeing some knock using our Plex knock monitor. We right. did, it was going off a little bit kind of on the top end. When we added more timing. So, right. so let's just, you know, recap here. 15 degrees, 93 octane, mm -hmm. made 574. 18 degrees with boostane was safe, made 598. Okay. No problem. But we took it up another two degrees, just to, as we're going to do with each of these fuels until we find the limit. Sure. So the limit with the boostane was 20. And it actually, at 20 degrees, picked up a lot more power. It's yeah, I six, see 613. 13. That's a lot more power lot over more 93. Power. But I don't know, man. I wouldn't send it home that way. That's the problem because sure. we did see knock up top. It's not really safe. It's not really safe. I mean, maybe for a drag strip only tune and one or two passes, knowing you're on the ragged edge, mm -hmm. okay. But if you're at that point, why are you not running something significantly you know, yeah, better on them? Absolutely. Yeah. So what I'm seeing here is this is a good product to mm -hmm. a point. Absolutely. And we found that point. And yep. what that means is this is boating really well for race fuel because the car seems to want to make a lot more power. Yep. We it just can't get it. the timing in it. It could use the timing. That makes perfect it wants sense. The timing. So uh, what we're going to call the maximum safe power with the boost aim plus 93 octane is 598. So it was a huge gain from 574 to 598, worth every penny. Absolutely. No I would totally agree. It. No question about it. Okay, very cool. And 18 and, degrees of timing. Yeah, absolutely. And the one thing I wanted to touch on really quickly is the mm -hmm. fact that, you know, if this was an LS1 car sure. with a V3 supercharger, sure. we would be making a little bit more timing. Yes. So there is mechanical stuff that goes into these direct injection cars mm -hmm. that is going to limit us on timing. And you guys at home are probably thinking, well, you know, that's a lot of octane and not a lot of timing. But right. given kind of how this the direct injection it. works, yeah, yeah, it doesn't always need as right. much timing. Right. So it, it is perfectly okay that we see that. And then you're also saying there's a huge difference between what we're seeing here mm -hmm. and what we would see like on a dyno jet. Uh, really not just dyno jet, but anything inertia based mm -hmm. doesn't have the load capabilities like ours has. Mm -hmm. uh, they're they're dyno jets that have, you know, great Yeah, they great do have eddy brakes. Yeah, know, they do. A, a few um, of them. Mm -hmm. I've been on, on those and they work great. Yeah. Um, the, the difference is just that um, with a load bearing dyno, this is going to accurately simulate what this vehicle can, can tolerate mm -hmm. on street and drag strip, you know, because it's going to load it properly. So if you did this on an inertia only dyno, you, your results are going to be completely different. Yes. And you're going to go, wow, I can run 25 degrees and I picked up 80 horsepower. And then as soon as you put it on the street, the or load's going to increase. The load's greatly. going to happen because it's the real load from the real world. It's going to ping. Yes. And you can't run that much timing. Yeah. So the gains were really false. Yeah. Absolutely. So here, what we're seeing are accurate representations of what this car would actually tolerate on mm -hmm. the drag strip or, uh, or street. Yeah, absolutely. We've, and we have former Tech Tuesdays that go into the load, how the load works on this dyno and stuff like that. So if you mm -hmm. guys are interested in learning more about that, right. you can reference those videos. Get a good load bearing dyno. Yeah, absolutely. So just keep that in mind as you're doing your tuning. So mm -hmm. this was awesome. Really good test yeah. results. And I'm excited to see what the other yeah. fuels are going to be able to do. Me too. That's going to be awesome. It's going to be fun. So for more high performance tuning knowledge, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on social media, and as always, stay tuned for more power.